if you get all the information and you want to have mercury fillings and, and take on fluoride, you should have that opportunity. Go for it. You know, it's your life. But by the same token, we shouldn't be forced to have materials and substances placed in us or on us that uh, aren't consistent with our health. Let's ditch the quick fix and dive into today's conversation. Welcome, everybody. My guest today is Dr. Kelly Blodgett. Dr. Blodgett is uh, redefining the modern dental experience. Over the past 20 years, he has created a practice which is recognized as an international hotspot in integrative biological dentistry and dental tourism. He attracts those who seek a holistic and biological approach to their overall oral health. Blodgett Dental Care believes in the whole health optimization. The team understands that the mouth is an integral part of the body. Blodgett Dental Care is committed to the implementation of minimally invasive technologies as well as scientific, biologic, and holistic principles to improve the overall health of each patient. I'm excited today to welcome you, Dr. Blodgett. Thank you so much. So I'm, I'm excited to have a, a fun conversation about uh, you know, everybody's favorite topic, oral health. Right? Oral health. You know, it, it, it's becoming, um, in my experience, much more uh, important. And I look back at my own history and go, boy, I really kind of missed the boat in my teens and my 20s and my 30s and my 40s, you know, I'm finally, you know, getting down this road where I actually had an autoimmune uh, situation that kind of led me to get a little bit more serious about oral health. So uh, yeah. I know it has a lot of great um, connection to overall health. So what's the, the basic difference between a biological dentist and a traditional dentist? And if you could, along that line, just kind of share your history as how you got to this point. Well, I like to... I mean, this is a gross oversimplification, of course, but, you know, when I think of how we were trained in dental school, it was very symptomatically driven, right? So it's like okay. someone comes in hot, hot tooth, there's decay in the tooth, there's an, infl you know, the gums are inflamed, we treat the symptoms, and, and the whole thing's symptomatically driven. The way that we approach it, care in our practice now is more systematically driven. And what I mean by that is we look at the the health systems within the body and understand that everything is connected uh, physiologically, energetically, everything's connected. And, you know, part of what got me to this point, I mean, I don't want to spend too much time talking about that because it's, it's a long story, right? I mean, I went, instead of going straight out into practice, I went to a VA hospital and spent a year um, having the benefit of working with, uh, you know, healthcare providers of all different shapes and forms. And, you know, one of the things that struck me was that uh, many of the, uh, uh, the veterans before going into surgery for whatever it might be, you know, some of them, they would wheel in and on a gurney, you know, and have, make sure that their oral health was in a state that it was safe to embark on whatever the surgery was. And I thought, well, that's pretty cool. You know, that wasn't something we did a lot in dental school. Uh, and then as time went on, there were certain practices certain practices, even in dental school for me, like, you know, mercury fillings, it just, I never even enjoyed it, right? Energetically, it never felt right to me, uh, particularly considering there were tooth colored bondable things, you know, like composites and ceramics. Uh, but things like root canals took me, you know, 10 to 15 years to really see the writing on the wall that the, the, the way that this procedure is designed, it's built to fail, right? It's a, it's a faulty procedure from the start. Um, you know, the entirety of the root is porous. So, you know, when an uh, endodontist or a general dentist does a root canal and says, well, it's all sealed up, you know, that's like saying that your, your, uh, your pleasure cruising boat made out of uh, foam is going to be fine. You know, and you get out in the water and what do you know? It took on all the, the water. water and you sink. And that's kind of the way it goes with teeth. So um, over the, I'd say the first 15 years of my career, you know, the, as we do, you know, you're learning as you go, right? We're, we're practicing our craft. And, um, you know, I saw a number of people whose health started to significantly improve after taking out root canal treated teeth. And it was a real aha. And sometimes we would see this with people who had, um, maybe that we'd put in a titanium implant and suddenly they were experiencing uh, eczema or something that, you know, they were thinking, well, I better go see my dermatologist, uh, you know, of course, which is how it goes. And it takes them six to 12 months to finally get back to us. And we think like, well, when did it start? Oh, that's interesting. Maybe a week or two after your implant went in. 
So, you know, there's a lot of things that my eyes have been open to over 20 years of doing this. And, uh, and we've really set it as our goal here in our practice to not only offer methods that lift people's health up, but perhaps more importantly, we've created an environment in a space where we acknowledge that what a person is saying and feeling and experiencing is absolutely legitimate and, and real for them. You know how, how often people hear like, well, I f- this happened, I feel this way, it's different, I, I think there's a connection, and how often dentists or physicians or whatever will say, no, 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 you know, that can't be, right? Because they're not familiar with that concept. And matter of fact, just this morning, uh, I had a patient come in who was referred to me by a general dentist in town, and I invited that dentist to come in and, and you know, observe what would happen when this titanium implant was removed from the patient's jaw. Because so I said, you know, I can't say with any, you know, 100% certainty here, but most of the time when I do this, you'll instantaneously watch as soon as that titanium comes out of their head, they'll notice an energetic shift. And then we just have to shut up and listen, you know, let them describe what's going on. And it, it was shocking. You know, I mean, to hear her feel dizzy for a minute, we rinsed it with procaine, gave her some ozone, and then suddenly like it's gone. Right. All the, two years of pain and suffering gone. And it's like, until you see that stuff, it's kind of hard to believe based on how we're trained. But anyway, we want to honor people's truth and their experience. And, uh, you know, it takes an, a lot of intentionality uh, on the part of my team. So uh, I know it's a little bit of a long answer, but you, you got, you got, you know, kind of the just, you've, you've kind of experienced some real changes when you started to look at things a little bit holistically. It's really one of the, I think the pitfalls we've fallen into for the last 60 years, probably as far as we've lost the balance between emergency care and wellness care. And, and then also the ability to say, Hey, we did something natural or not. And the body is reacting to it positively or not. And we definitely need to listen to the patient. And, you know, that's happening even today when in our current environment with, you know, the virus. But I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. But anyway, you know, it's it's kind of what's going on there. And so uh, what you've just kind of touched on, I'd like you to kind of expand on a little bit is how, you know, how these foreign materials impact not just oral health, but overall body health. And so if you could kind of connect the mouth to the body a little bit further, that'd be great. We, we tend to think of, or and I don't want to generalize, I, I will say, let me rephrase it this way. My experience has been, you know, when I went through undergraduate, you know, all these science classes, you know, you go through dental school and it's all, you know, so uh, objective and, you know, you've got to have so many studies and blah, blah, blah. And it's yeah. almost like we we lose common sense to, to some degree. And certainly we definitely don't learn um, that, that skill of, being present and listening and, you know, taking on what we might be able to learn from another person and what they're sharing. But, you know, we look at something, let's take titanium implants as as an example. And I I just had this conversation with a gentleman this week where he comes in and he said, we were going to place an implant, uh, you know, where he'd had a tooth removed a a couple of years ago. And, uh, you know, he he wanted to know, well, you know, I understand that they're zirconia, a ceramic, um, which is pretty much all we use in our practice now. And understandably, he wanted to know, like, why, why would we use that instead of titanium if titanium has been successful for 40 or 50 years? And I said, well, that's a, you know, it's a, it's a great question. It, it certainly is an option you could choose. I wouldn't do it for you, but somebody else could. But here's what we know, you know, based on science. And I think that some people want to understand that, right? Like, sure. it's, going, it's going to release in this case, not only titanium ions, but whatever other ions might be within that alloy. And of course, every, this is crazy. Every single uh, implant company who makes dental implants creates a different titanium alloy. So, you you know, so you imagine like, and I had this, I posted a case that I think it was two or three weeks ago about a woman where she had nine different metals in her mouth all at one time. And she had lost her job. Her brain literally wasn't functioning. And in the chair, real time, as we were removing one metal after another, her life was changing. Her shoulder pain went away. 
her vision got clearer. She could hear, you know, she could smell. It was wow. the weirdest thing I've ever seen. And I'm like, well, at what point did she go over the edge, right? Because clearly it wasn't the first metal that, that threw her off her game. And, and the trouble is, as, from a biological perspective, there's no roadmap for any one person as to like, how can you tolerate one metal alloy? Three, five, seven, right? And so from my perspective, I would prefer to minimize the risk. And since we have materials in, in the dental health world for almost all things that are um, of a balanced energetic nature, it seems to me like those would be wiser to use if we want to facilitate and support health. Just from a biological perspective, we try to keep people in that, that um, direction uh, if it's consistent with their health values, which you can imagine those are the people generally seeking us. So you're using that kind of that foam boat analogy where, you know, you bring something in and, and what you're saying is, you know, we can get this leakage of the material metal specifically that starts into the system, into the blood <laughs> system and starts creating havoc downstream. And, and it's, it's kind of, sometimes it, it can be immediate. I would imagine like some people that come in might have an immediate reaction to a procedure. And then for some people it's down the road and then all of a sudden, well, I did this tooth implant a year ago. And, and that's not to mention the EMFs that are possibly right. playing with that implant as well. Right. Absolutely. So, I mean, it's such a cumulative effect and that's what we don't know. It's like, well, where have you been living? What have you been drinking? What's in your water? What's in your mouth? You know, what's in your knee? You have you had surgery, you know, all these, you know, for any one person, who knows what's going to be the straw that breaks camel's back? Sure. Know? I, I, I use that an analogy a lot. You know, what, what am I doing? What am I doing? I said, well, everything, you know, everything is leading to that moment where you just bent over and you experienced a pain. Um, it's the straw that breaks the camel back. Uh, before we kind of get into some of the specifics, more specifics on root canals and I wanted to kind of get into amalgams as well and cavitations. What are what are some of the integrative approaches that you're taking towards your care in your office? Well, one of the things that is so unique, um, I've talked to a lot of dentists and I've never heard of anybody doing this. We currently reserve at least one day a week, sometimes two days a week, where all we do is see new patients. Okay. So if, if somebody's coming to our practice, there will be no clinical care happening that day. There's no sounds, there's no smells of dentistry. It's just, and, and we've actually created a 1,000 square foot area within our building, which we call our wellness wing, where we have very specifically designed rooms for new patient conversations, for like IV rooms while you're chilling out, getting your IV vitamin C. We put in a, uh, one room has a Novathor red light and infrared light full body bed. You know, we're, we're currently working on integrating some EAV work. Uh, for those who don't know, it's kind of a way of, you know, energetically measuring the fluence of energy through your body and its energy meridians in our world as it relates to oral health. So, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of, of aspects of how we uh, connect with human beings here, which is so outside of drilling and filling teeth. And, and it starts and stops that way because we don't want this to be about, you know, the drilling and filling of teeth. We want it to be about relationships and trust and value. And so we've had to rethink how do, well, you know, why did we approach care in the first place, you know, the way that we have, right? So since we are the masters of our own destiny here, I mean, uh, our practice, although we do help people build their insurance, we're not on, on any PPOs or things like that, right? So we don't have insurance. We don't allow insurance companies to dictate what kind of care we can offer. Um, so with that flexibility, we're able to think very far outside the box. That's that's cool. That's that's another uh, um, good distinction between a traditional approach and and what you're doing in your office, bringing in these different therapies and and setting up a different whole different approach to how you're taking care of patients, a wellness kind of approach. I, I like that a lot. So. Kind of coming back then towards the, you know, the amalgam or the root canal. Um, maybe we should stay on the root canal for a second. Sure. Uh, what would be your uh, typical approach for somebody that's had a root canal? It's my understanding from researching a little bit to pre prepare for this interview and a couple others that in most cases, 95% of root canals are asymptomatic. 
uh, infections from root canals. Is that your experience as well? Yeah. So I have now sent out well over 400 roots or more or, or groups of roots uh, from people's mouths, uh, most of which looked fine, right? Quote unquote, uh, on an x-ray, right? They had been told sometimes, as a matter of fact, the woman that I just finished uh, removing four root canals on today, she was telling me, you know, she'd seen five different dentists, five, spending all this time and money uh, trying. And again, if anybody listened to her, why would she go any further? Right. But nobody's listening. So she's like, I know my body wants to be healthy. I eat right. I sleep, you know, I do all these things and she looks super fit. She takes care of herself and, and still she has no energy and feels like crap. Well, you know, it doesn't matter what they look like on the x-rays. We took them out today. Is This isn't always the case, but every one of her teeth was completely black inside. You know, and some of these were done 30 plus years ago. So imagine that, right? Like these roots, which absorb microbes and are literally just passive uh, pathways for microbes to get into your jawbone. Her body's been fighting that for three to four decades, you know? Just a slow trickle, like a, a slow leak in a wall. Exactly. That's a great analogy. Um uh, and I have yet, uh, on any of those that I send to the DNA at, uh, Connections Lab, I've yet to see any comeback that didn't have tons of microbes. And it might be, usually it's a combination, parasites, viruses, bacteria. Um, and this is what's crawling inside your jawbone. And nobody knows it, right? They're told, oh, you know, your tooth hurts. You need a root canal. Which, by the way, the, the phrasing of that is so toxic in and of itself. You tell somebody you need this and you're the professional, you know, it, it, you're, you're then pushing onto them your value system. So they think, well, I must be wrong if I tell them, no, I don't want to be wrong. I don't want to create conflict here. So I'll go do it. Oh, and by the way, my insurance company will pay for the majority of it. So it must be fine. And then you wonder why, you know, my health's gone down the toilet. Sure. You know, and, and kind of touching on a little bit of a sensitive topic when it comes to, I think you've kind of shared, it's kind of a little bit of a misinformed consent. Yep. Um, you know, and a lot of dentists, a lot of medical doctors are doing things they feel is the right thing to do, but maybe there isn't enough information that they have or that they're actually sharing with the patient. So maybe touch on that a little bit. Um, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's certainly, and, and I understand, right? If we go back to the 1930s and 40s and 50s and look at, if we ask the question, maybe this is a better way of saying it, if we ask the question, how on earth did you know, the human population suddenly decide that keeping dead body parts attached to your jawbone made any sort of health sense, right? Well, like a lot of things, you know, the technology developed such that, hey, you know what, if we uh, remove the nerves, blood supply, and lymphatics from these teeth and stuff it full of this toxic material called gutta, gutta percha, uh, we'd be able to keep the tooth in there. And I'm not going to argue against that because, hey, keeping your tooth, it's aesthetic, it's functional, totally makes sense, right? But yet it costs you something. And that's the part, I love the phrase mis misinformed consent, because it's not like you're being uninformed. Most people, most dentists will say, well, you could take the tooth out, but you know, here's what I would suggest, right? Go get the root canal, uh, then put a crown on the tooth. Basically, we're going to, you know, which is so ironic, by the way, when you do a crown and remove every bit of enamel, you've removed every part of the tooth that was impervious to microbes. So now, you know, all you got is a crown that leaks sitting on foam, basically, right? It's very skewed in terms of how information is delivered because it's it's how, you know, dentists are taught to make money. If I'm being honest, right? It's like, well, you do the filling and if the filling doesn't work, then you crown it. And if the crown hurts, then kill it, you know, and and then you've built out everything you possibly build, right? <laughs> well, and uh, yeah, and it's kind of unfortunate, you know, there's a system approach to healthcare again, you know, yep. and, and some of the, the opportunity for integration just has not gotten into the system. And I, and I agree, there's a definite financial incentive there that makes it difficult to really give patients uh, from a systematic approach, a real holistic look at taking care of 
whatever situation they have. And in this case, we're talking about oral health and root canal specifically. So yeah, so there's a little bit of that misinformation. Uh, they don't really, and patients are, you know, they're kind of in a vulnerable position, like you said, they're in pain or whatever. This, they just had an emergency, got in a car accident, whatever it may be. Right. That's causing this decision that this is trying to, you know, walk the patient through. So once you get to that root canal and it's in there and it's a couple of years down the road or 30 years down the road and you say, hey, let's take this out because we didn't know this 30 years ago when they put this in your mouth. But this can lead to a downstream toxicity on your brain, on your gut health, you know, whatever it is. Let's work on mitigating that. So what would a typical root canal solution look like, like, you know, you do every day? You mean, oh, sure. Like in terms of taking taking out a dead tooth. And how do you how do you uh, stop the uh, infective process that's in the jaw? You know those types. Sure. Of yeah, I mean, oftentimes I'll use the analogy of getting a, a large sliver lodged into your skin, right? Okay. Like let's and let's say part of that wood shiv is still sticking out into the you know the the environment around you. Into, you know, yeah. As long sure. as that thing is exposed, you'll have stuff you know crawling inside. In this case, your jawbone. So the first step and the most significant one is get it removed safely. And, you know, in our practice, we're, we use supportive therapies such as ozone injections to try to help uplift the immune system's ability to get ready to combat what it's going to have to deal with. Because once you remove the tooth, of course, you're going to have a release of stuff. Uh, we, we know that that happens. That's why you look at the American Dental Association, the American Academy of Periodontology, like there's all this interest in like, we got to protect people from periodontal pathogens. Well, it's like, where do you think those periodontal pathogens go when they're sitting next to a dead tooth? They go right into the darn tooth. So anyway, you, you, when you remove that, there's, you're already, you've already been exposed to some extent, but then there's going to be this event, right? Where you, you're shaking things around, you're going to have more release into the system. So, you know, in our practice, we're supporting people with IV vitamin C during surgery. Um, we're using ozone therapies. We're using uh, homeopathics. We're using red light therapy. You know, we're using a lot of supportive things that lift the body's immune system ability to regenerate. And what's really cool, like we stuff. The, the extraction site full of their, their healing cells. Uh, it goes by a name of LPRF or IPRF. There's different uh, platelet, uh, platelet rich fibrin, right? So you're basically okay. taking all of your healing cells and shoving them into this area. So, you know, we have, gosh, I think eight team members here that are licensed phlebotomists now. Okay. So, you know, yeah, we borrow some blood, spin it, and then get the healing cells out and put that back into the site after it's been cleaned out because ultimately a lot of patients not all but you know many would like to have a tooth later uh sometimes we're able to put in a, a ceramic implant at the same time you know each case of course is, is unique but um the goal is whether an implant goes in or not we would love to see their their bioenergetics set back to a healthy normal level yeah. So like you said, you've kind of opened up the the small leak and it's kind of going to leak a little bit faster when you're in there working on it. So you got to yeah. get some material in there to stop that. And the ozone and some of these other antimicrobials will help that. Uh, and depending on where the tooth is located, the patient might decide, hey, yeah, I want to get a new tooth in there. So that's kind of the process of uh, getting that taken out. And And really the big benefit is stopping the chronic pathogen microbes from leaking into their system. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we, we've had people where it's like the instant the root comes out of their mouth, they observe a marked shift in their energy. And the way that it gets described is different from human to human, but it is like still like, I mean, I've been doing this approach to care for about five years now. It still blows my mind, you know? Wow. It gets I me really excited for people, you know? I think kind of stepping into maybe go right into cavitation. So cavitation, for example, is a tooth that's been pulled and not necessarily treated sufficiently at the well, time. Yeah, I mean, it can happen a, a number of ways. In essence, when a person has a tooth removed, and, and this happens quite commonly with the wisdom tooth sites, mm -hmm. uh, which is a whole nother conversation to have really, like the 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 way in which 
16 to 18, maybe 20 year olds are encouraged to just, you know, get your wisdom teeth out regardless of, you know, it's like, well, they're tiny now, the roots haven't formed, it's the easiest time to pop them out of your mouth. Like, well, maybe, you know, maybe they're there for a reason, which is a <laughs> different conversation, of course, but let's say they do, they do have their wisdom teeth removed and you've got these open areas where you're just praying that, you know, good blood clots form. And again, considering this is mostly on late teens, early 20 year olds who kind of think they're invincible, of course, and, you know, they eat, don't necessarily follow uh, post-op protocols. And so let's say some food stuff gets in there, or let's say they're drinking some soda and the carbonation, you know, starts to dissolve the clot from the acidity or they smoke or, you know, you name it, it could be anything. Uh, you know, they're sucking down a McDonald's shake and the, the suction pressure pops the clot out. Could be any of these things. And the bone is going to be slow to heal, but the gums will close over the top very quickly. So if you end up with microbes, food particles, you know, what have you, the body is going to try to protect you by walling this thing off and it can develop into what's called a cavitation lesion. So I've opened a few that, you know, they, they literally look black. Um, some of which are vo- or appear to be free of microbes, but it's completely dead, right? It's just avascular necrosis. Kind of creepy to have, a, you know, along your, uh, your heart meridian, <laughs> you know? So but it can happen in any extraction site, which is, I mean, that's one of the primary reasons to support the body's healing with LPRF when you extract teeth, so that you're going to minimize that risk of forming such a cavitation. And I've seen so many iterations of uh, these cavitation lesions. And also what can happen too, in terms of energetic disruption would be, let's say somebody's healing and a scar forms through the the alveolar process, the bone itself, right? We get the scar through there and it might not necessarily be infected, but it's disrupting, disruptive to the energetic flow along that meridian. And I've seen that a number of times for people who had uh, premolar extractions for their orthodontics. You know, I mean, it's all very interesting. So when people come in and they're saying, well, here's my health story, you know, we really want to look closely at what are the organ systems they're describing? Where are we seeing that they've had alterations to their oral environment, whether it's fillings, root canals, crowns, uh, titanium implants, whatever, right? Uh, Extractions. Any one of those things could have potentially interrupted balanced energetic health there. And unfortunately, they won't get healthy until, you know, we acknowledge that at least it's a possibility. Yeah. And I, gosh, in in the world I play in a little bit is um, very similar, Uh, you know, the somatovisceral connection you know, where the spine has a connection to the organ system and interference of nerve flow, what we're talking here, meridians, energy, yeah. flow, those kinds of things has an impact on the viscera and the viscera, which is could be your heart, your liver, your lungs, your blood, your bowel, your bladder, whatever it is, you know, is going to have an impact on your, your spine, you know, so if you have back pain, it's not always just spine related. It can be, Hey, something's wrong with the liver. Something's wrong with the, the kidneys. Something's wrong with the bowel, you know, that kind of thing. And, 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 and that's what I think a lot of people don't realize with oral health, yeah. there's this same connection. And it's amazing that when you're working on a tooth or having a bad tooth, how it impacts whatever that tooth is connected to neurologically. Oh yeah. It was so interesting. I've had in the last month, I think I've had, I've met at least four women I mean, this is in one month, all of whom had root canals on one of their front teeth while they were pregnant. And of course, you know, the the front teeth are connected to the ovaries, uterus, bladder. And it's interesting how like they didn't have any pain in their teeth and the teeth were perceived to be perfectly healthy up until they became pregnant. Oh, interesting. And it's like, hmm, I mean, that could be for any number of reasons, but of course, what's the solution? Well, your tooth hurts, do a root canal. And, they, and that's the story that each of them shared. And it's like, wow, you know, that's now you're stuck with that, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. That, that is crazy. I, you know, that's an interesting story. 
Yeah. So switching into amalgams, uh, I want to try to ch just touch base there and then maybe get into some other health strategies that will inter that you'll integrate, you know, and you've touched on a little bit, but maybe go a little bit deep, deeper. But amalgams have their own reality, right? Um, right. We'll yeah. I mean, game. there's so many countries in Europe that have just banned it, right? Because it's like at this point in the game, we have so many materials that are not only tooth colored. I mean, that's always nice, of course, uh, if it looks like a tooth. But that are they allow for the ability to treat only the portion of the tooth that has been infected or affected by erosion, decay, whatever it might be. The issues with mercury amalgam fillings are twofold. One is that in order to <laughs> shove material, you know, into a, a tooth that you can't glue it to the tooth at all you have to dovetail all of your prep. So you're cutting away so much more material. And this is living human tissue, mind you, you know, uh, you're cutting away all this tissue that you normally would not need to if you're using bondable materials. On top of that, the liquid in that liquid powder mix that we call amalgam or quote unquote silver filling to make it seem palatable, right? Half, 50%, actually it's, actually a little bit more than 50% of every filling, silver filling is mercury, liquid mercury. And even the, the American Dental Association last year finally acknowledged that, all right, we do admit uh, science is clear, you know, chronically mercury amalgams release uh, uh, mercury vapor, organic, oh, yeah. or, uh, inorganic vapor. And it's like, but, you know, their stance is, uh, with, it's not a problem as long as you're not a pregnant woman or a child six or under, you know, <laughs> it, now if you dropped a, you know, compact fluorescent light bulb on the floor in that dental office that had a skosh of mercury, like maybe one, one hundredth of the mercury, you know, you got to turn on the fans, open the windows, but you can shove it in people's heads and it's fine. Does not make any sense. Makes zero sense. And the science is so clear. It's just unhealthy. There are better options. You know, I really encourage people if their dentist says, hey, we're going to put in the silver filling, just say, please no. You know, like, I know you have better materials to use. Just use that, you know? Right, right. So what are you, what are you recommending for patients to do to kind of improve, uh, you know, a, a common term that we hear today is their terrain, you yeah. know, the body itself. Uh, you know, I know a lot of things I try to recommend to patients. What are you recommending? How are you integrating you know, some of the natural things that can be very helpful for patients. You know, like you said, you have this patient in there, she's very healthy and all those kind of things. And she really, she didn't need the help that she was giving herself. She needed the help that, you know, we had had to remove the toxicities, but we, re we really need to remove the toxicities and do our own good health advocacy, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, we're blessed this at this point in time. I got to say that the majority of people who find us are you know, they're not eating McDonald's and drinking Coca-Cola for dinner. You know, I mean, no, no, no offense if you do. I mean, it's, it's your own choice. But, you know, they're, they're generally from a nutritional and gastrointestinal health gut standpoint. They're doing the things that that are the healthiest options to do. Uh, by the time they find us, usually it's like this is the last step. Uh, we recognize, of course, like if, if, if you're if you're not pooping, right, if you're not getting stuff out. Uh, that's a problem. So we've got to deal with that. And, and, and we don't pretend to be like nutritional experts. It's like we refer out, we, you know, thankfully we've met people from all over the place that love to do that and are qualified, but we have to build this team, you know, like uh, we're, we're getting to the point now where, you know, uh, we've worked with a functional nutritionist to come up with some simple steps of, you know, doing some soluble and insoluble fibers, uh, you know, usage, some, detox uh, protocols, things like that. But again, we try to outsource that stuff that really isn't within our oral health purview. All that being said, what I hear from a lot of other healthcare providers is that they recognize that until the dental stuff is resolved, the rest of the body is going to have a really hard time trying to clear, like, let's say you want to detox your heavy metals, but you still have six mercury fillings in your mouth. Like, Right. Doing the detox protocol is not going to have a lot, you know, it's like trying to put out a fire while you're still pouring gas on it, you know? Right. <laughs> right. Well, and it is so much more important to get those out. And and that's, it sounds like, yeah, once you've got the mouth clear, 
that's a good time to detox. Absolutely. Yeah. So we kind of have that team approach, you know, we, we do, like I mentioned, I mean, we do offer things like IV vitamin C and, and, uh, you know, biophotonic therapy using the Novathor okay. bed. It's like people are already here, you know, it's a great way to get them into that parasympathetic drive before they head off to home. And we want to yeah. help people get there. Another thing I'll mention, just because I've, I've been blown away by its success, we utilize a system called Alpha Stim. And it's this little device that you clip to the earlobes and it entrains your brain to this alpha wave phase. It almost feels like you've had a glass or two of wine or something like that, you know? And okay. it, what's so lovely is that, you know, of course, a lot of people, when they come into our environment, they're, they're nervous, you know, they're right. in sympathetic drive and it really helps to calm people down uh, in a way that even if they're trying to get themselves excited, their brain's just like, man, I'm cool, you know? And it's, um, we have them in every treatment room and it's, it's a lovely non-drug way to help a person calm down, you know, w- without them having to make any effort at all. So that's kind of cool. A great natural approach. I know that some offices use the nitrous oxide and, you know, that yeah. kind of thing, a little bit of a different approach there. Yeah. That, that sounds like a good thing. Yeah. I'm one of those guys. I'm uh, the getting into the dentist chair is a little bit of, yeah, I have to spend a little time cal- calming the mind, you know, kind of <laughs> deal, so. <laughs> so, Hey, you know, we're getting kind of close and I'm really appreciating, you know, the conversation. Uh, but getting close to t- wrapping up here a little bit. I know sure. you have some opportunities that people can connect with you. And I, I think one of the things that you're uh, doing is the weekly uh, social media post. Uh, yeah. Share a little bit about that. Yeah. About three years ago, I started doing a post series called Toxic Tuesday. And, you know, it started off as an intention uh, with the intention to share with people the truths that I have observed uh, through helping people um, remove root canals, remove, you know, toxic metals, things like that. Point out that, you know, the information you're receiving around things like fluoride and such, uh, despite what the American Dental Association would say about it, uh, that there's a lot of scientific information that would suggest that this is putting your health at risk. And, you know, again, I'm a huge proponent of freedom of choice. If you, if you, you know, get all the information and you want to have mercury fillings and, and take on fluoride, you, you should have that opportunity. Go for it. You know, it's your life. But by the same token, we shouldn't be forced to have materials and substances placed in us or on us that don't, uh, aren't consistent with our health. So anyways, so I started writing that Toxic Tuesday series. It's, it quickly became an avenue to share the, the health recovery of those people who had suffered due to oral health issues. And then within about six months, I started the counterbalanced part, which was called Wellness Wednesday. Okay. So we oftentimes tell, not every week, but many, many weeks, I'll share the story of a person and, you know, they, they came to us and here was their story. You know, they had such and such done in their mouths, their health tanked. It took them, you know, they, they had to hear, no, it can't be this 20 times you know, from other healthcare providers, spent right. 10 grand doing it. And then they found us and here's what we plan to do. And then wellness Wednesday is here's what happened after we did it. And here's what in the patient's words, not mine, right? This is another human being's uh, story and what they're sharing is their experience. And it's so great. Cause I mean, I, I get messages from people on Instagram from around the world every week and they share how positively the stories they've read there have impacted their health, their spouse's health, their parents' health, their children's health. It's a very humbling experience to hear that from others. I'm glad that I'm glad that people are are taking that information and making good use out of it. I receive a little bit of flack from other dentists, as you might imagine, but uh, you know it's worth that price when people are getting healthy. So yeah, Instagram people can find me. Uh, my handle is at Blodgett Dental Care. And uh, we repeat the same stories and everything on Facebook. I'm not really on Facebook uh, in terms of responding to questions and such there, but you know, I only have so many hours in the day. Right, right. You know, exactly. but that's uh, that's how, where we send a lot of information. So awesome. Well, you know, and, and that's such an encouragement that, you know, you're getting those kinds of testimonials and people are encouraged. Uh, typically, you're, taking new patients, I would imagine. 
Uh, Absolutely. You probably travel from different distances to come and see you. Um, what does that kind of look like? I know you said you kind of have these days that you set apart for just new patients. Somebody yeah. that travels a long distance compared to somebody that's in the, the area that you're in. Right. Um, they probably have to plan a little bit differently. What, you know, kind of in a summary, how does that look? Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, we do have one team member here who is her, her job primarily is our new patient coordinator. She helps people from around the country and sometimes outside the country to, you know, help arrange, you know, uh, timing, flights, hotels, things of that nature. M most, I'd say at least, I don't know, probably a half to, a, to two thirds of our new patients every week have come from other states. Um, you know, two days ago, I was helping out two people, one from San Diego and one from St. Louis. Okay. You know, and we're in Portland, Oregon, right? So. Um, thankfully we have a, a, a nice international airport so people can get here. Uh, but typically people fly in on a Sunday, they come in for their new patient experience, which is at, at least two hours, uh, where they have one-on-one -on -one time with one of our, uh, dental hygienists and one of the doctors, and it's specifically about them. And then some people, not all, but some have pre-sent uh, information, whether it be uh, x-ray information, photographs, um, they've done work ahead of time so that the following day, Tuesday or Wednesday, uh, if they want to have clinical care provided, we can, you know, set that up within our schedule so that we're prepared for them. And it's, it's awesome. I mean, we're, we're able to do so much in such a compressed period of time because of the planning and the technologies that we have you know, implemented over the last 20 years. I mean, we're, we're just getting ready to put in this, uh, Oregon's first dental robot so that we can go to placing dental implants for people, you know, immediately not having to 3d print guides and things like this, that we have been doing. Right. So our goal is to help as many people as we can who want to invest that way in their health, uh, in as short of a period of time. Cause I know it costs people, you know, not only financially, but it costs them time cost them energy uh, to make that commitment to come. So we want to make it as worth their while as we can. Um, every case is unique and different, but yeah, we're, we try to try to help people meet their goals. That, that's the bottom line. Yeah. And it, it's, it sounds like it's becoming more efficient and streamlined. That's pretty exciting. The robotic kind of technology. It's really, really interesting. Unbelievable. Yeah. So cool. So, Hey, I just want to thank you again for joining us today. And I hope people take advantage of checking into what you have to offer I know there's a lot of people that could benefit. And uh, so thank you for joining us today. I just want to leave everybody with, hey, be encouraged by this information. Have a yeah, great absolutely. day. Absolutely. Thank you.